Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now we've been talking about um, prayer. Teach me to pray. And, and I told you, the Lord said this month, we, he's going to be doing a work in us. You will see your response to his work in prayer. Okay. And then in, on your inside, he's going to be doing something in he is going to be causing you to become. Now, before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith with me right now and believe God for a miracle today. Whatever area you need help, Jesus said, We should ask the Lord, give me this day my daily bread. That also means daily provision. David declared and said he daily loads us with benefits. It's God's job to daily release to us his benefits for us. Now, let me just help you um, today. This is just by the way. If it is God's job to release to you daily benefits, Guess what your own job is? To look out for those benefits and receive it. It's not enough to know that God has plans to release benefits to you on a daily basis. You must be a Jesus said, you shall be witnesses unto me. Okay? You shall be witnesses unto me. When he says you shall be witnesses unto me, sometimes we just have the wrong ideas of what, what he meant by that. Now God, David told us that God daily loads us with benefits. Where's the proof of that? He daily loads us with benefits. Who are the us? Are you getting what I'm saying? Who are the us? There is an information that God daily loads us with benefits. So now, first of all, you need to define who are the us. Are you included in the us? Hey, Commander. If you are a child of God, you are part of that us. You see, because I have said this many times, Jesus didn't come to preach a new message. His assignment was not to preach anything new. His assignment is to confirm what God has already said or what God is already doing. So you imagine David declaring to us that God daily loads us with benefit and Jesus comes how many thousands of years later and Jesus said, ask God for your daily bread. You see, why, why didn't Jesus call it benefit like David called it? See, that's the, that's the foolishness in human reason. See, a lot of God's people, you see, the, the thing, even amongst pastors, so you don't blame them. People don't understand the revelations of God. See, people don't understand the revelations of God. And, and, and you can prove anything you want to prove using scriptures. It doesn't mean you're speaking the mind of God or the revelations of God. See, I was talking to someone recently and I, one can even prove that the Son of God hasn't come. Yes. You say, how? Okay. Isaiah prophesied and said, um, A child is going to be born. And then Isaiah specifically said, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. That's, that's what Isaiah said. And then and, and Jesus is born. And his name was not called Emmanuel. His name was called Jesus. And guess what? Isaiah spoke by the Spirit of God. The name Jesus was given by the Spirit of God. Because it was an angel that went to Mary. I said, you shall call his name Jesus. So how come God said, 
to Isaiah, Emmanuel. And the, an angel came. So if, if it was Mary that just named him Jesus, we said Mary must have been some kind of, you know, there must have been some disobedience in Mary or in Joseph, okay? Maybe she just didn't like the name Emmanuel that she was given. Now, imagine in the same community, okay, they had John the Baptist born just six months earlier. And the name John was not a name that they were used to in their community. If you know, I mean, read the scriptures. So when they asked Elizabeth, what would we call him? Now the husband had mentioned to her that he had his vision and, and this is what he was told that they, she's going to have a son and they'll call his name John. So now Zachariah was dumb, okay? He couldn't speak. So when the child was born, it was the eighth day when they circumcised the child and then they were to name the child according to their tradition. So they said, okay, so what shall be the name of the child? And she said, John. He said, what kind of name is that? Nobody in our tribe. Nobody in our... We, we don't know that name. And she said, well... So the, there was this argument. Like, oh, okay, okay. Well, no, the father is here. It's the father that is supposed to name the child. So let's ask the father what shall be the name of the child. And it beckoned on, on, on him. And like, you know, they communicated to him. So, okay, give me a writing material. And then he gave him a slate. And he wrote down the name John. Okay, and so an angel gave them a name that was not one of the names they were used to in their tribe. So six months later, an angel appears to Mary and says to her, you will have a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Please take note of the, the the words of the angel. Now, in in thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't know. Who I'm sharing these things with. You. I'm sure someone is getting blessed because because I have things I I was ready to share with you. But see, when when I sit here, I just flow with the spirit of God. Yeah, even even no matter how prepared, sometimes He's even the one that told me, "You want to share on this?" And I say, "Yes, sir." And then the moment I start, it begins to take me in a different direction. I have learned to flow with him. You know why? Because when we start, there might be someone that will enter into the room. Now, when this broadcast is going to be aired or whenever it's going to be watched, he, he knows the end from the beginning. Are you getting what I'm saying? I've seen miracles, even with this broadcast. I've heard stories. So I know what I'm talking about. So when the Holy Spirit begins to take us in a different direction, I just flow with him. Why? Because he knows who he's dealing with. So an angel told Mary, you call his name Jesus. Did the angel forget the former message that was given concerning Jesus? Why did he just simply say you shall call his name Emmanuel? Now, what's the meaning of Emmanuel? God with us. And now the angel says, he shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So, someone without understanding, you know, these are the days of knowledge. And, and, and because we, we are in a generation where people like to argue things out, when people like to get proof of things without revelation. Because even when you're sharing the mind of, say, give me proof, show me from the scriptures. This is one of the reasons the Jews had a problem believing in Jesus because they were waiting for an Emmanuel, okay? Now, if, if a virgin gave birth, now they heard that Mary was born, of, or that Jesus was born of a virgin. They heard it. But guess what their interpretation was? It was fornication. Because their interpretation, they couldn't believe. Now, the, the news went out, okay, that these people got married because Joseph had to quickly marry Mary. So, news went out. You know, these things can never hide. So, news went out that Mary got pregnant before time. 
because they were betrothed. Now, when we know what, what betroth being betrothed means, means the families have agreed that hey, this is going to be your wife, this is going to be your husband. Okay, so they knew that they were they were all children. From from history, I read somewhere that Mary was about twelve years old at that time. Okay, so so. They were betrothed already, so they were just supposed to grow up when they are now ready to get married. When, when, when Joseph feels he's matured enough to take care of a woman, or Mary's matured enough, they, when, they, when they get to that point of understanding, and that's even what Paul was talking about in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, right? When he talks about if a man, uh, if a man has a virgin and he sees that he cannot hold himself anymore. He said they should go ahead and marry. You don't have to wait until everything is right. You know, so now Mary comes and says, I'm pregnant. How are you pregnant? Okay. And then the angel visited Joseph also. And then so they had to quickly organize a, a wedding to get them married. So it doesn't appear as though Mary gave birth. Um, out of wedlock. So now the Jews, the, the, when that news filtered out, they saw the whole rush to the wedding. Guess what they interpreted it to be? They interpreted it to be that they committed fornication. Because they knew that Mary was pregnant before that marriage, that wedding. You know, it happens today, you know, people get married and then seven months down the line, a baby, she's giving birth. They're like, ah, is it premature? No, it's not premature. Like, ah, I thought you guys got married in this. Wow, what a miracle. Praise <laughs> God. You know what I'm talking about? I was like, ah, this, this must be a miracle. No, you know what happened. There's an issue of fornication there. See? Fornication in the sense that they, 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 she got pregnant. And because, I mean, they have to have sex before pregnancy will show up. You understand what I'm talking So the Jews felt that Mary and Joseph committed fornication and that's why they hurried the marriage. So there was this tag around Jesus that he was born of fornication. Now that's the same person also. And then two, of course, they, they couldn't start explaining that she was a virgin. No, we didn't commit it. But she was a, they couldn't explain all that. How, how do you even start explaining? Think about even today with the witness of the scripture. Even today, if a lady comes to you now and tell you, ah, Pastor, I don't know what's going on. I had a visit, visitation last month and the Lord told me that I'm carrying a special seed in my womb. And I was like, okay, you know, trying to understand whether God wants me to do a business or, or there's, there's something he wants me to do, you know. But ah, I, I noticed I missed my period uh, last week. And I was wondering why. I waited, waited. Yesterday, I said, ah, let me just go do a test. And the test shows I'm pregnant. Even you as a pastor, <laughs> you will be cracking your brain. Who, who, who does this person think I am? <laughs> that's, that's your first response. It will take layer, it will take a visitation from the Lord to you to accept, even though you know this sister. So imagine now trying to explain that to a whole community. So if, that's why I tell people, say when, when God's prophecy is being fulfilled, he will not tell you. He doesn't owe you to tell you, except you are in tune with him. See? So, his name was not Emmanuel. They didn't really know, even though there was a prophecy that a virgin will give birth, but they didn't read that as a virgin giving birth. They saw that as fornication. They accused Jesus one time, said, we are the seed of Abraham, who were not born of fornication. No. They were accusing Jesus. They knew what they were doing, in, as in John chapter 8. They were attacking him directly. We know you. So they couldn't believe and accept that he is the son of God, even though he was there. Now, now you see the same thing, you know, Jesus said, ask God to give you your daily bread. And someone will be saying, if, if he was referring to the same thing with David, he should have said uh, daily benefits. 
Huh. May God give you understanding. So Jesus just came to tell us what God is already said, God is already doing. God, David said it as a fact about the person of God. He daily loads us with benefits. Now that benefit is not only money. It's not only meeting your physical needs. It also talks about your health. It talks about, hey, that's, that's why I know you shouldn't die today. You shouldn't die today. See? Protection is involved. They are all your daily, daily benefits. He daily loads us with benefits. I said, you are part of the earth if you are a child of God. And Jesus said, now make a demand for it. That's why on this broadcast, every day on this broadcast, we, we say, Lord, we receive. Hallelujah. Why? First, I'm bringing it to your consciousness. That's what the Lord wants. I'm bringing it to your, you, you have daily benefits to receive from the Lord. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, bread there doesn't also mean the, the physical white flour mixture that you eat. It's beyond bread. And the physical bread is part of it, okay? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But it also means every supply that you need. Kaya Badus. You should never, in the first place, even take the literal meaning first, you should never go hungry. You should never starve. You should never be in want. Oh, money for, for gas or petrol in your car, it, it, it should be supplied to you. I, 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 <laughs> a few, sometime last week, you know, my wife and I we were we were discussing because my wife told me that we, we need to buy um, rice. Now, truth is, for many years, I cannot remember us buying rice in our house. There are some things God have just taken out of your hands, you know. So, so, so my wife like ah, the rice is almost finished. In fact, what we have left now, if we make it. Uh, if we if we cook it, that will be all, you know. So I said, okay. Now before then, a friend of mine, I'm sure he's even watching. A friend of mine have sent me uh, a classmate of mine back in school, you know, have sent me uh, pictures They're like, oh look, I'm, I'm distributing this rice in case you need it. So I like, wow, okay, good, you know, and the price was good. Okay, so um, I spoke to my wife about it. They're like, look, oh. How much do they sell rice now? You know, let's let's compare. And she told me, I said, like, obviously, this is good price. And then my wife was like, hey, but this brand, I'm not sure of this brand. Let's let's buy this brand. And the brand she was saying was more expensive. I'm like, look, this is my, you know, this is my guy. You understand? So if the brand is not good, he knows well not to sell me something that is bad. So we had that argument that day for like, you know, a day. And then we went. Okay, um, let's leave it. I'm sure by tomorrow we'll decide. Guess what? The following day, our help, you know, came to me and like, oh, um, someone brought rice to the house. Like, rice to the house. Like, who? And I said, your neighbor brought rice to the house. Like, what's going on? Praise <laughs> God. I'm like, okay, so I had to call and say, ah, this is wonderful. Thank you. And like, oh, this is, this is how, this is what. It's like, wow. Now, I could baratas. You know, I tell people sometimes, angels listening to your conversation. We didn't pray. My wife and I didn't hold hands and say, let's ask God for it. We just had a little, not serious argument. We just, we're just talking about brand. Which brand should we go for? Now, I was being... Let's patronize, you know, my friend. And then she was like, the brand, the brand. It's like, okay, you know what? I want us to patronize my friend. In fact, at some point, she said, okay, hey, let's do the two. <laughs> you understand? So if this one is not good, then we deal with this one. We just left it that way and, and trying to decide. By the next day, we would have, of course, we needed to buy. We didn't pray. 
And you understand what I'm saying? We didn't pray. We didn't say, oh God, we need rest. No, we didn't. But you see that conversation. Angels were listening. So look at these people. Uh, please, let's go and do, do our thing. And they found the nearest person. Give us this day our daily bread. I Are you ready to pray now? I don't know why I shared all this with you, but I believe today God wants to reach out to you. Say with me, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo, glory. Receive a miracle today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Wow, it took our whole time. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.